So I went into Bones and All completely blind. I hadn't seen a trailer or read any synopsis. The only thing I had seen was the movie poster that looked like it had two young people in love. So naturally, I figured this was a romantic drama. Oh, I really wasn't prepared for what this actually is. A young woman named Marin learns how to survive on the margins of society while meeting others who share her secret. Now, I'm going to be a bit vague in spots just on the off chance that you haven't seen a trailer and you want to go into this like I did. Just note that if you do that, it could be a bit of a shock. This is a romantic horror film, but not in the slasher horror that you might expect. Taylor Russell, Timothy Chalamet, and Mark Rylance are the stars, where Russell is the main character of Marin. We follow her as she has to learn to make a life for herself after her father takes off, leaving her to basically fend for herself. Russell plays Marin in a shy, damaged, and guarded manner, and while she has a tiny bit of naivete to her, she's also observant but longing, and all of these together make her very endearing. I really enjoyed going on the journey with Marin. She's searching to find her mom, who left when Marin was very little, and because of how her dad took off, she's got a lot of abandonment issues, which then help to shape her decisions as she looks for her mom, even if she doesn't realize those experiences are guiding some of her choices. Now, the storytelling is slow and it's patient, but very early in the film, we get a shock that opens up the story for us to realize what this could be about. Now, I enjoyed the slower pace of this as it allowed me to connect with Marin and become invested in her. And I had said she was endearing, but I found myself becoming increasingly concerned for her as she traveled, even though in certain aspects, she could probably more than take care of herself. I mean, she just has this innocent to her looks that made her feel a little more fragile than she actually is. When Mark Rylance is introduced into the story as Sully, he is instantly captivating because of the persona that he's crafted. He's a bit stuttering, certainly odd, but there's this vague menace to him that just seems to permeate the air. And even though at the start, we've not really been given any reason to feel that way about him. Now, Sully isn't in this a ton, but his scenes are very powerful and they're important to Marin's journey. And I love how quiet he is. But there are moments where the character gets to be explosive, and Rylance almost looks shocked when that side of the character comes out. I loved how there's this torn expression that Rylance manages to create for Sully. And in this, it really showcases what's behind the curtain of his eyes. And there are a few times that he is absolutely terrifying, and those feelings mostly come about because of the emotion that's showcased in his eyes. We see into his soul, and there's this ferocity that just goes deep. It's one more nuance to the film that makes this disturbing and intriguing all at the same time. Now, eventually, Timothy Chalamet comes into the picture as Lee, this drifter dude that Marin meets in a store. Now, Lee is laid back, almost aloof, and it's very reminiscent of some of Chalamet's other performances. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. It just feels a bit familiar, like maybe this is more Chalamet we're seeing than Lee. But this is where the romance angle comes into play, and the two sell it convincingly. They're both damaged and emotionally hurt. They're loners who happen to find each other, and they just click. Now, I like their dynamic together because it's not simple. They both bring conflict and baggage, which is a huge complication. It makes for some great drama, because we'll be rooting for them, and then a decision is made where I was just shaking my head because the character would now be making life so much harder on themselves. Now, I thought the duo had some good chemistry, and they connected well, making the romance feel plausible and engaging. It's young love, so it may not be everlasting, but they made a couple that I wanted to watch. Now, I'd said this was a horror, and there are definitely some horrific elements in this. It's not a scary movie, but just very violent and visceral when the violence occurs. And there are more than a couple of times where I cringed because of the imagery. The effects are outstanding, and then because they're practical, the whole thing is just disgustingly believable. Now, if you're like me and going into this blind, you may not want to have a large stack of snacks for this. Or if you do, maybe finish them quickly as some of what is shown may make you gag. I mean, but here's the thing also. This isn't overly violent just to be violent. The scenes we're shown have purpose and they're certainly shocking, but not overly gratuitous. And they also don't go on for extended periods of time. We see the actions we're meant to and they're effectively horrifying. But then the story continues. And I appreciate that because it keeps the story from becoming just a slasher film that's lost its way. This is still focused on Marin's journey and then the romance that grows between her and Lee. Now, it's funny. I saw this movie about a week ago, and it's really taken this long just to process how I feel about it. When I came out of the theater, I was a bit shell-shocked and I was even quiet, trying to figure out what the heck I'd just experienced. Now, sitting with it over the last several days, I've grown to really appreciate the characters and the storytelling. 
Was this a movie that I instantly wanted to rewatch? I mean, absolutely not. But now I'd like to watch it again, especially knowing more of the trajectory. There's a tragicness to the entire thing that creates a very lonely aura. But there's also this hope that's hanging in the air. So even when the story threatens to put us into the bell jar, there's a feeling of something great that's yet to come. Do we get that? Well, I'm not going to spoil it, but this does give us a conclusion and a resolution to the story. While I know this won't be everyone's type of movie or story, if you like tragic romances that are mixed with stellar performances and aspects of horror, this is an experience. The movie's two hours and ten minutes, and there are points where you can feel the time because it feels like the characters are just wandering. And they are. They might be on a journey, but they also are a bit driftless as well, leading to some meandering. But it's in these moments that we get to experience some awesome cinematography of just broad open landscapes that just sprawl, which creates an even larger sense of loneliness as our characters are swallowed up by the expanse. So overall, Bones and All is an intriguing and disturbing story of love and searching to belong. Russell, Chalamet, and Rylance are riveting in their characterizations, crafting personas that are endearing, disturbing, and nuanced. The content may be shocking, but when it's combined with beautiful cinematography, grotesque practical effects, and a patient pace, the story is an enveloping romance that isn't easy to forget. There's sex, some nudity, a lot of profanity, and then some gruesome violence. I give Bones and All four and a half out of five couches. So what's an odd romantic film that you like? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.